So now we have our crew cab running, driving, uh, done the shakedown, we got it ready to go. It's time to kit this thing out for actual work and figure out how we're going to haul tools on it. So, so this episode is going to basically be about outfitting this 1978 square body crew cab as a working uh, mechanics truck. It's it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be an expensive mechanics truck because I don't have lots of money. So I'm going to use what I have and what I can get. Well. It's, honestly as cheaply as possible to outfit this thing in the best way possible for me within the budget that I have which the budget I have is like I don't know seven or eight hundred dollars maybe to get some kind of bed solutions and everything on this thing so that's not much at all because you know like even a deck system costs a thousand dollars you know and so those things are out of my price range unless I can find one really cheap so this thing is going to be about getting this thing as a working, running, driving service truck. So, let's dig into it. So far, my solution for tool carrying on this truck has been this contractor utility cap which I'm going to load up with my tools and see how much I can transfer from the utility bed probably take some of these shelves out if not all of them and see how many of my boxes I can fit in there because I prefer the drawer boxes for mechanic tools rather than just loose shelves these are the same on both sides I got a bin down each side which is absolutely fantastic. So I never really showed how my utility truck was set up tool-wise really well, but uh, I got the majority of my tools into this contractor cap. Uh, these boxes, this is my electrical box, this is my hand tools box, screwdrivers, and uh, you know, vice grips and that sort of thing. And then I got my RTV and stuff. and. I have my specialized tools up here like spark testers and uh, compression and vacuum testers and things like that. And over here the rest of the hand tools, the sockets and wrenches. Uh, I have to get a bin for the ratchets and stuff I'm hoping to put here. But you can get a surprising amount of tools in one of these. Uh, I'm going to add any overflow is going to go in bins in the back. I got my emergency flux core welder and everything up there. And course I have my spare tire I'll probably stand that up and my jack and fluids got to reinforce the bed there uh, on the sides over here are dedicated tool kits and consumables uh, so we got our all our consumables like electrical connectors and light bulbs and wiring and you know springs and hose clamps and o-rings and all that stuff and tool kits you know like my leak down tester and bearing pullers and tap and die kits and uh torque wrenches and that sort of thing you know kind of the tool kits there and the consumables there and everything's really easy to get to it actually wasn't this easy to get to on the utility body because those are deeper and sometimes you got to pull stuff out so you can get to other stuff in the back when you want to haul a lot of stuff like i do so i think this will work uh fairly well, if not, possibly even better than a utility body. Uh, I'm going to have a ladder rack up there with... I, I carry a short ladder and stuff if I want to work on trucks and tractors. Sometimes you got to... It's easier to have something to stand on. I'm going to carry my short ladder and stuff up there on the ladder rack. I don't get it out of the bed. I always carried it in the bed in the utility truck. So, things that I have to decide yet. Generator and air compressor. For sure they're coming over onto this truck i just haven't decided yet how that's going to work i'll probably mount them up toward the front of the cab right now this is pull start but i may get an electric start kit for it i think i can modify this i think i can tap these holes modify this for the starter mount and then i can do electric start and then i can mount it like inside the bed with an exhaust coming out through the floor or something of course the air compressor can stay 
uh, buried inside the bed. Here's the ladder I carry I was talking about. And my jack stands and stuff. They'll be undercover now. I never had any of this able to be out of the weather on the utility body, so that'll be nice. Also, I like to have at least a small vise just to hold stuff when you're working. I don't know how I'm going to mount that yet. I'm thinking maybe I'll get one of those slide-in hitch mounts or something, or maybe I'll mount a hitch mount in the bed of the truck with the vise on it, and then I can just pull it out and mount it into the mount on the bed. Uh, most of my tools are over, except for my, you know, beating and massaging tools and my ratchets. Everything else fit actually into the same space to that contractor cap. Um, I used to carry my oils and greases and things down there in case they leak in the back of the truck, but I'm going to carry them in the truck bed now, probably in a tote, so... Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of information I'm sure nobody cares about, but if you if you run a utility or if you run a utility or service truck for a living and you know <laughs> organization is important because you want to get to stuff quick and you want to know where stuff is and you don't want to lose things and easy access and all that so you'll know what I'm talking about um, I think that's pretty much it what I'm talking about with the vice is I'll get probably get like a trailer hitch slide in and like weld it to the bed in here and then I can just pull, put the tailgate down, pull my vise out, and mount my vise in here over top of the tailgate. And that way I'll have working area. Tailgate's going to be my new workbench, I guess. I used to use the fold-down bins on the sides for a temporary workbench. Got to mount a fire extinguisher in here. I'm probably going to put hooks down the sides here selectively so I can hang extension cords and things like that. For easy access because then I can just reach in and grab them uh, <clears throat> another thing about the crew cab that's nice that I like and one of the reasons I wanted it is not only do I have the back seat but I also have I can put all this stuff behind the seat easy to get to without knocking my head on it I got my earmuffs ear protectors and safety glasses and hard hats and things like that and they can just stay there out of my way but if I want to get to one I can just easy open the door and grab it so uh, again, incredibly boring if you don't do any of this regularly, but just figured I'd show my setup real quick for anybody that was interested, so. Yeah, I think this is, this is going to work pretty well. Uh, once I figure out what I'm going to do with the generator and the air compressor, I, th I think the generator and the air compressor will mount really good. Uh, one on each side under the bins up there in the front corner out of the way because you can't really use that space very easily anyway And if you want to access it, you got to crawl up in there. So if I put my generator on one side and my air compressor in another and uh, I Don't care about this bed floor obviously because it's so holy and I can just run the muffler on the generator right down through the floor uh, and vent it out of the bed that way and Sure, when I run in the generator, it'll sound like a giant echo chamber in there, but I don't care about that. Uh, and I think I can get the air compressor. I might have to separate the tank from the... Right now, the air compressor is mounted on top of the tank, and I might have to separate them out horizontally, mount the actual air compressor, like, on top of the wheel well there or something. And I think that'll work pretty good that's all kind of inaccessible space anyway that's really hard to use unless you get specialized toolboxes but and then we'll have the center for things like the spare and overflow tools and jack stands and things like that that are really hard to store so that's where we're at still have bondo falling out of this tailgate i don't know how much bondo they stuck in here but it's just it just keeps coming out i mean they must have used like a full gallon of bondo jammed in there so like what is that steel wool or insulation or something they jammed in there to take up space <laughs> it's just i don't even know <laughs> i mean it's just like they just drooped it in bloop lots of bondo yeah so that's where we're at i'll get back to you when i have something more to show you all right excuse the messiness of my gear thrown in here but i threw some metal supports along each fender side and along the back real quick just to hold it together i didn't worry too much about you know making it look great or even throwing a ton of welds on there because 
all it has to do is just kind of tie everything together. I'm not ever planning on putting a ton of weight in this bed, and this thing's so roached out already that it, it yeah, it, it, it doesn't really matter. So I just threw them in there to kind of connect the supports to the side that weren't connected anymore. And then I threw the rubber bed mat back in that came in this truck just to kind of, you know, make things easier and cover some of the holes. This, I guess, isn't for this truck. It's it's not wide enough. See, it only comes to, like, I, I don't know what truck it's for, but and the fenders are the wrong size, so... I don't know, it's for, like, an 8-foot bed on a narrower truck or something? I don't know. Anyway, it was free, <laughs> so it's going in for now. That's our temporary solution. Still got to figure out the generator and air compressor setup, but uh, this is what we're running for now. We can get a good deal of our stuff out of the weather and uh i can already hang some stuff on here because you know not up here but along here where the sides are nice so yeah that's working so far i think um since this tailgate is so far gone i am going to abuse it further by possibly reshaping these corners on each side where it uh hits the side there i'll probably just beat it into shape or something i would rather reshape this tailgate than the topper because if i ever do have to get a different truck or something i can reuse the topper but I'm not going to want to reuse this tailgate so <laughs> i'd rather abuse the tailgate so i'll probably just get my hammer and you know do a little massage on each corner and then it'll shut better and won't hit the topper so yeah i'll do that and Moving along, definitely got to figure out, uh, I don't like crawling into this thing, like I said before, on truck beds. I uh, don't like truck beds so much because you got to crawl up in, but I'm thinking if I get one of those bed drawers that I can pull out, I can access everything a lot easier. Of course, those go between the wheel wells, so if I still put my generator and air compressor up there, on the inside of the wheel wells that might work i don't know i'm considering it those are expensive and this is not a high budget project and i don't really want to spend much money because although it's my service truck i don't have much money at the moment and if it's something i can do without and just make do and work around then that's what i'm gonna do for now so maybe down the road we'll see i don't know if i find one cheap enough i'll go snag it up and let you know so I've disassembled my air compressor and reassembled it in a more linear format rather than vertical. That's the problem I find with a lot of these air compressors, that they're all built up because, well, I don't know. I guess that's easier for the air compressor builders, but very few are built in a linear fashion. Well, it's actually fairly easy. I just reconfigured the uh, line from the pump to the tank. And then I just put a 90 degree here on the valve regulation system and that should all fit below the side of the bin so I can shove it up there in the corner in that space that's really hard to get to and that I probably won't be using much of anyway. So I've measured that space is three feet and this is, this is less than three feet. So it should put it fit up there pretty good. Uh, I haven't determined yet whether I'll have to bolt it down or not. This might stay on its own, just be in there because, you know, it won't vibrate as much as the gas engine on the generator or wherever I'm going to put that. So I think I can just set it in there and maybe it'll hold its own spot. I don't know. If I don't have to bolt it down, I'm not going to because that makes it easier. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to do on this thing. Um, the rear leg is shorter than the front leg because this was the one with the axle and the wheels originally. This is like the fourth format for this air compressor tank. <laughs> originally it was originally it was a wheeled unit and there was an axle that went through here with wheels. So that's why this is up off the ground and that's down further because that's that's the stand and this was the wheel end. So I just extended that out with some blocks of wood to tie this together to keep it from, you know, to keep it together. I don't want the pump vibrating separate from the tank because this is all obviously tied together 
this poor regulator is so old and beat. <laughs> you can't even read the needles anymore, but that's okay. I don't have to. Uh, and then it's still within range of the wiring here. I'm going to wire in a cord that's going to come out here. And, of course, my line will come out here. And I'm thinking maybe I'll hang my reel from the bed here. Where did I put it? Over here. My hose reel so that I never have to crawl back in there to get to the air compressor except for service. I can just pull the tailgate down and pull my hose reel out. I think that's how I'm going to do it. I can just run a short length of hose from the hose reel to the air compressor and that'll take care of that pretty good. I don't know. Let's see how all this works. I, I think this format will work here. I gotta wire up my cord and we'll see where we're at. Well, it seems to be working out pretty good. Got my hose reel installed. Just got a hose running back to the air compressor. And that's, uh, you know, it's using that space that I don't really use. So that's great. I can just come back here and yeah, so I did my fire extinguisher. That's great. I just pop the back open and grab it. And I got one in the cab. You know, when you drive an old truck like this, you should have multiples. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that was the easy one of the two between the generator and the air compressor. Now I gotta figure out the generator. And I have looked all over, and this thing's old enough that I can't find an electric start kit for it, and I can't find a flywheel with a ring gear that's not like $300. You know, because for a little bit more, I could get a generator already with electric start. So, yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I can mount it in the truck, kind of, you know, like on the other side on the tailgate and pull it this way, maybe. Uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I can maybe mount it in this spot, and then I can get in there to pull start it. And, of course, my switches will be right there. I just have to mount the electrical panel somewhere, but I can figure that out. Maybe hang the electrical panel from the box over here or over there or something, I don't know. Anyway, that's, that might be what I have to do. I might have to bolt it down to the bed to keep it from bouncing all around. It's already on rubber bushings, but it is, I'm afraid it's gonna move if I try to, if I don't bolt it down and I don't want that, so. I guess I'll get the generator off and setting in here and see what it looks like. Make sure it's not too high and that kind of thing. See if I actually have any bed left to bolt to there. Not sure on that either. Well, I moved the generator over here just to see how it would fit. And so the exhaust exits over here. Which I can change that with a little welding and reroute that. The uh, fuel and everything comes out this side, that's fine. It'll just go along the bedside if I put it in there. Let me show you how it fits. Alright, so... Maybe. I mean... I can lean over the tailgate here. We'll have to get her pull started. I can probably bolt it down. There is enough metal there that at least some of those bolts will work. Um, I don't think it's over top of the frame. Not sure about that. So there's a couple issues here which I knew about. And one of them is if I don't put it up on some kind of platform at least a little bit, it's going to make changing the oil really hard. I have a couple inches there. Now, I don't want the exhaust exiting that way, so that muffler is going to have to come off, and I can weld that into any form I want with some tube and pipe, maybe even put a bigger muffler on it. Anywho, and just have it exit, you know, like out the side or somewhere here where I can, space I know I can keep clear. That conceivably could work. I have to run a fuel line on everything up here. I knew I was going to have to do that. It's just a little bit more fuel line than I had bargained on. i got to get it up on blocks of some kind. 
if I run wooden struts under there, it'll give it enough height that I can do things like drain the oil and service it a little bit easier. Maybe if I just screw a wooden block down to the bed, because again, for the thousandth time, I don't care about this bed because, you know, holes. Um, yeah, that conceivably could work. So then there's the question of the electrical unit. And I think, depending where I put the muffler, I can mount that up here or up here, make it really easy to get to. And you can just reach into the bed and plug stuff in. That's fine. Uh, ordinarily, I would really like it mounted on the outside so you can plug stuff in, but I don't know. I mean, I could hack the bed up and put that through. I don't know. We'll see, maybe. Of course, then I gotta do something weird for my air compressor. Uh, I was just running the cord right to the one of these plugs before with the air compressor and then I didn't mention it but that's how I've been turning it on and off. I just plug it in or leave it plugged in and start the generator and then it automatically starts the air compressor because it's always on. Wooden blocks maybe. Let me see what form that takes and what I can do here. So I've added to the side of the cap the sliding rail system. This kind of was an experiment. I just kind of got it into my head that I could do this real cheap. Basically, it's just four pieces of PVC pipe, two right inside the other, and there's a metal plate between them and slots. And it slides in and out. I should have cut the slot bigger in the bigger pipes because it's a little tight. I expect it'll loosen up over time, though. So I can get some of my stuff out of the way here. Some of my greasy, oily stuff that'll just roll around in the bed and get stuff dirty otherwise. It's a little tight. But it works pretty good. And you know, you can easily get to stuff like your extension cords and stuff, keep them organized and out of the way, and you don't have to dig through bins and stuff. So these plastic hooks, I bought these magnetic bins online. I'm not too impressed. The sidewalls need to be higher because kind of, you know, things slop around and these plastic hooks they give you for them are about useless, but you know, anyway, it'll work for now. Um, if I have time, I'll go back and try to make it ride a little bit uh, looser. I shoved some grease in there for the time being. Well, okay, I shoved a lot of grease in there for the time being. Worst case scenario, if I don't feel like using it, I can still crawl into the truck bed. But I think for the time being, that'll get some stuff up out of crates out of the way. This is all stuff I had, you know, just kind of thrown into a tote, shoved in the bed. Really hard to get to, at least at the very least it's up out of the way. And like I said, hopefully the more I use it, the more it'll loosen up as things wear in, you know. Well, it barely clears the tailgate, but that works for me. <laughs> reason I picked those materials is because I had this steel plate that came out of the bed of this truck if you watched part of the rebuilding of this and it just took a little bit of PVC and that's pretty much it you know like I don't know what 20 30 dollars worth of PVC maybe tops and a little bit of time and effort and some hardware and that's about it I don't know if it'll make my life easier or not we'll see at least to build my muscles pulling that thing in and out till it wears in. So I've been trying to figure out the generator situation and the generator needs to go onto this truck. It's it's just the way it needs to go. So that corner, but we need to be able to access it to pull start it and access the switches. So what I'm thinking is Marine access hatch. Bam, right there in the side. I don't care about this bed because it's pretty much junk and I already tried to sell it for scrap metal and no one bit <laughs> so I don't care about blowing a big hole in the side and putting in this marine access hatch so 
if you've never seen one of these these are just these are really heavy duty and they're made for outdoor use and it actually has a weather seal on it and everything none of which matters really to me because i just needed a cheap access panel so yeah we're gonna zip this thing in the side i think i'm gonna mount it I think I'm going to mount it with the lid down, because if I mount it with the lid up, it's, I don't know, it might be falling in my way or whatever. Let's see if this, uh, yeah, see the lid wants to fall down when it's in the up position. So, and we'll mount it like this. And just to access the generator, when we're into the generator, we can leave it open, so. And I think the bottom of the bed is even with... Right about there, so I think that'll be about right, and we'll figure out, move it as far forward as possible for the pull start on the generator, and I think then we'll be good to go. All right, that's pretty much it. Pull that down. Oh, more gently than that, but I got two more screws there. Got to find two more, and we'll be able to reach in the pull starter generator. Hopefully, line the generator up in there. That's the next step. Might have to make the interior. I made the interior opening a little bit smaller on purpose, but I can make it bigger if I need to. This one, of course, this is a set size. I can make that interior any time, any size I want. Let's lock it shut. Doesn't have to be weatherproof or anything, but I think it is. I could have run a bead of caulk around there, but again, I didn't because I don't care because it just opens to the, basically the outside anyway. I mean, that's just, you know, open air, so. Yeah, put those two screws in, slide the generator in, and, and we'll see where we're at. So, the hitch does make everything accessible. I don't know how well you can see it in there, but... Here's the pull cord and, of course, the switches. And the fuel switch is back up in here in the choke. Where's the choke? Well, anyway. Oh, hi. Yeah, it's a little bit of a reach. That's how you, uh, far you have to reach in for the choke. I may put a rod, you know, to activate the choke. But that makes it so I don't have to crawl into the truck bed. And it makes it so the generator weight is in the front of the truck. And those were my main goals there. We've brought some organization to the back of the truck here. At least I got a central corridor so I can get in. I got to get more hanging magnets so I can hang more things. I got extra air hoses and things that I need to hang up there. I don't use them a lot so they can stay near the front of the truck. And jumper cables and stuff that's just thrown in here right now, but uh, you know, there's room enough for my emergency welder and my generator air compressor and everything and gas can and extra toolbox, you know, extra some crates and totes and some equipment boxes. So I mounted the generator output up here so you can just plug things in, hang in there nice and neat. And I just bent the corner around a little bit at a 90 degree so that you, you know, don't reach back there and get in the wires or anything. I just extended the, the cord on the plug, just extended the wires individually and then bundled them to get all the way back to the generator back there. The only thing I haven't done is I want to run the exhaust outside the truck, whether it's down through the floor or out that port. I'm thinking out the port because right now that exhaust where it sits coming down like that is directly over the frame and I had mounted that flange on there welded that on so that we could take the exhaust wherever we wanted it and I think I'm just gonna do a 90 degree back and a 90 degree over and then aim it out this port and so when you're running the generator you'll just aim it out this port and I don't know I may even just aim it down here down onto the truck so 390 degree bends and some pipe and uh, that should 
resolve that. And I think that's pretty much it for the generator. Once I have that up, I can run it. I don't really want to run it shooting the exhaust in here, but I could if I wanted to. I got the fuel pump hooked up, so that's pretty much all I needed to run it. And it does pump fuel and everything. Uh, I had to mount the fuel pump to the side of the frame underneath. I tried mounting the fuel pump up here, and I didn't think it would work. And sure enough, it didn't. It's just too high above the tank. These aren't made, these little clicky-clack pumps aren't made to to push, or to pull fuel. They're made to push fuel. So it has to be close to the source or below. You know, or about the same level as the source. Right now, everything that I need is relatively accessible. I took a few items off the truck, some things that I hardly ever use, and I might take a few more things off. I have this box weighs like 100 pounds because it's all full of all my sockets and everything. And my big, like, anything over one inch sockets that I don't use very often, or like axle sockets like this that I don't use very often, or I got a Duramax flywheel kit there, that sort of thing. I might take out and put in a separate box and keep in my trailer that I can hook up to this if I need my special tools but I don't know I'm not, I'm not sure we'll we'll see how that works it's getting dark here because thank you daylight savings and the government for not changing that so that's pretty much it for today but we got it to the point where everything is a lot more accessible so that's good the only downside here is I don't like I want to keep this aisle and I can't turn this box because it'll block it but I can kind of reach everything it's just you got to lean over the tailgate it's kind of a pain, but that's the way it is. So I would like to figure something else out better for those sockets, but I don't think I'm going to right now. I think that's how it's going to stay. I guess I should have mentioned with the tailgate up, it's easy enough to reach in here. The only difference is you just don't have your workbench. I like to put the tailgate down for all the time, but that's fine. Uh, if you don't put the tailgate down, you can access those relatively easy. I did secure my spare to the front up there between the generator and air compressor out of the way because I hope not to need it very often or at all. So that's way up at the front out of the way, uh, taking up less space. So that's good too. So as far as driving goes, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I don't like truck beds is, you know, everything kind of just rattles around in here. That, I'm going to have to come up with a better solution for. I'm not sure what source that's going to take. But anyway, it's time to put on the generator exhaust. And I'm basically just going to try to run some iron pipe out here and then maybe down there. So let me show you what I got for that. So I don't know if I showed it before, but I welded this exhaust flange onto here because I knew I was going to be extending it. So before I put the generator in here, I welded this on. No, they're not great welds or anything, and I'm not going to show them to you up close because they're just welds and they'll work. So I'm going to try to elbow it down, run it over, and turn it again and run it out there. Hopefully it won't go too close to my spare tire or anything. Might have to build a shield into it or something. I don't know. I'm not sure what form that's going to take. Uh, we'll figure that out. Maybe if I move the spare tire that way. I don't know. Anyway, I got some pipe and a flange and stuff and show you that. I should note that I've been driving around and this rack, everything in here has stayed put and held up. Amazing. So I got more of these straps so I can hook more things. I got like my spare brake line up there stuff towards the front that i hardly ever use you know and i can get to it so uh you know i got a few extra for more things but exhaust so i got this flange that'll go mate onto the flange for the generator and then it's just going to be iron pipe from then uh i'm not going with anything fancy and it doesn't need to be anything fancy. All we want to do is direct that exhaust and heat and uh, carbon monoxide out of the bed. So that's our goal, and I think this will accomplish it. So we're just going to 
mate this to the generator and this will be of course be able to be unbolted in the future if need be so all right have this mocked up we'll go in like that and i believe i got all the lengths correct these are just you know off the shelf lengths i didn't thread them i have long since sold my large pipe threader so i'm not doing that stuff anymore well i hope i'm not doing it anymore anyway uh this should fit in there uh, and this is just all standard stuff I just bought at the hardware store so let's bolt this up and see how she fits all right I got that fabbed up in there bolted on and so yeah I mean it works pretty good it just comes right down here and goes through that gap between the bed sides I could still reach in here and pull start it so let's see how all the starting goes and the running and all that. Let me see what we got. Turn the fuel on. Reach up in here. Turn the generator on. That's the switch right here. Oh, choke. Some vibration, which I'm afraid of. Maybe I can fasten that exhaust. To the, uh, fasten that on there. Stop the vibration with a pipe clamp. I could probably do that. And then I got my cord here. I can pull out. I think that'll work if I modify it just a little bit. I have a strap across the exhaust pipe here. Uh, let's start it up and see how much vibration that takes away. set up. I know you should use a circuit breaker as a switch, but I do it. Yeah, I'm going to have to move that fuel pump switch because reaching up in there beside the hot exhaust pipe after it's been running a while to shut the fuel off that's that's not gonna work I'm gonna probably make some kind of switch pad to mount switches there and maybe a rod to extend the choke like I was talking about that's down the road this will work for now is enough to get it working and it won't vibrate around and it's actually on the rubber pad and then it's on wooden pads so it actually didn't vibrate around much before a few times I ran it without the extended exhaust pipe so that that will be our setup for now I don't want to put a lot more money into this thing right now because well you know I, I do these projects and I do them as cheaply as possible and yeah there'd be better and more expensive ways to do them but guys when I say I don't have any money I'm not kidding here's my shoes right now and I'm debating whether or not to buy a new pair or just fix these with duct tape because that's the state of affairs <laughs> so yeah I I got more of those straps I got everything lined up there I got like spare brake line wrenches and things up there um, because well I don't fit here real well but I don't know we're gonna have to 
check that out. In an ideal world, it would go in here. Well, I'll have to look at that. Um, this is not set up tremendously the way I would like it. I want to get like some screwdriver mounts and put screwdrivers and pliers up here where they're all accessible. Get them out of this box. And I have another box exactly like this one that fits in here so nice. And I'm thinking put that there but I can't do it in its present form because these drawers are completely full and this box is bigger so I got to get some stuff out of those boxes uh, now if you noticed I have these clamps here because when you're driving these will slide down or some of these tools will slide down if you're not looking and when you open the side they'll fall on your feet that is a downside to running one of these. I was thinking the other thing I could do is mount like screwdrivers and stuff like up here. But I can't use magnets because this is aluminum and I'm not sure I want to drill through here, but uh, I might be able to use some kind of adhesive. That might work. Put my screwdrivers and stuff up here. They don't weigh a lot and they'll still be accessible. I'll have to look into that. That, that might actually be a better plan there. Um, what else? I did loosen this rack up a little bit, so it's a little easier to pull out now. That's good. I just, you know, worked it back and forth and ran a file down the groove in that pipe, which I should have done the first time around. I have to do some kind of mount for my grinder and little portable vise there. Like I said before, I want to do a trailer hitch mount, but, um... I don't have that yet. I'll have to see if I have a spare trailer hitch laying around. I'm sure I do somewhere and maybe weld some kind of mount plate up for that. But that's in the future. We'll get to that. Just not yet. I have some other projects that need done. And this truck's been taking way too long. Uh, goodness. All this work to go over to a crew cab from a utility body. That's what we were working out of. Just a regular cab utility body and I wanted the crew cab like I said before but yeah so I got to move my what do I got to do yet I got to move my switch gear for the generator and again I've, I've taken some things out of this box I took the heavy sockets out of the top it was a little top heavy put them in a larger box back there because I don't use them a lot and that weight can go up toward the front of the truck anyway and I moved some more weight out, some wrenches and things. Those wrenches hanging up there, my spare wrenches, they were in there, but we will see. So that's going to do it for this. Uh, this thing is ready to go, and it'll do the jobs that I need it to do right now. It might not be the best service or utility truck in the world, but it's going to work for my purposes, and that's the important thing. It's got all the basic things that I need on it, and it's pretty much bulletproof and dependable at this point so that's a win in my book thanks for sticking around with us if you like this kind of thing we do things like this on the channel but we're also going to be using this truck you know at least for the next couple years because I gotta get my money out of it so <laughs> this is this is the new service truck for not just the channel but my daily life so anyway thanks for sticking with us I appreciate any likes comments subscribes uh, always helps the channel and helps my morale and convinces me to make more content like this. So, as always, thanks for watching.